Hey there guys, so I am really excited to get started on this little project with you. Uh, for 21 Secrets, I am going to be showing you one of my little favorite tips and tricks for art journaling, and that is to work with a, uh, a limited palette. And a lot of times I'll gain inspiration for these color palettes by looking at papers, by different, you know, collage papers or uh, scrapbooking papers, or different materials that just catch my eye because of their color. And my friend recently sent me a gift and it was wrapped in this beautiful paper. And you can see it's kind of made up of turquoises. It has like this really red current color in it, this kind of peachy color, and of course white and black. And actually this isn't a typical color palette that I would work in, uh, but I was very drawn to it. And so the way that I make this super easy on myself is of course, I could mix these colors up, right, with our, with our paints. You can mix them and try and match them. But as a little cheat or as a little trick, I like to get these Martha Stewart paints. They're very inexpensive. They're craft paints. They're very matte. They come out creamy and you they come in like a crazy amount of colors. And so instead of trying to mix paints and match them to this, which you could do, um, I decided to just run over to the store and bring my paper with me and pick up some paints that work with this color palette. And this color palette will guide me through the entire uh, art journal spread. And what's great about using a selected color palette is that you know that your colors work together, you know that you're going to create color harmony, and you know, it doesn't give you a lot of room to fail, which is great. Uh, and you can kind of work freely with the color and know that they all interchange well and relate to each other well. And so I highly recommend choosing a color palette before you start working. It's not something I always do, but I do tend to do it in my art journal. And you can see there's, in my art journal spreads, I do tend to have a color theme. And this just helps me, again, stay focused and stay loose and kind of just let things flow a little bit easier. So it just depends on my mood, which colors I'm drawn to, but you know, I just think this is a great way to start out. Okay, so now that I have my color palette and I've got my inspiration paper, I go through my uh, stash of collage materials and start to pull different images. I'm very inspired by some pictures that I took of my daughter recently. And so I may use these in my collage and in my painting. And then I've got some napkins, I've got a black and white landscape, some different vi vintage pieces of paper. And I'll be incorporating all of those or some of them into the art journal spread. So as you can see, this is an old vintage uh, ledger that I use as my art journal. It's such a great way to uh, just experiment and explore. And I love vintage things, so that makes me super happy that this is old. It's over 100 years old, actually. 1908 here, we see the date. Um, and I do a lot of work in here. I do a lot of, uh, you know, again, experimenting and playing around with different colors and different textures and different materials. And I'm sure most of you do the same thing with your art journal. So to kind of beef up and kind of keep these pages a little bit more durable, I glue two pages together and then I gesso each side. Okay, so to further reinforce the spine of the book and kind of the spread here, I often will use um, a type of tape called gaff tape. And this is actually a fabric tape that is very strong. And so I'll get a little strip of this. And I will actually just run it down the center here. You don't have to do this. This is just something that I like to do. It just creates a, a smoother, easier, uh, you know, crease. Just trim off the excess. So you can see that I've gessoed both sides. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of gesso right down the center here too. Probably should have put the tape on first and then gessoed, but that's okay. I get kind of excited. Sometimes I jump ahead. I'm sure you guys can relate. So I'm just gonna put a little more gesso down this to kind of get it ready for my paint and my collaging. Now on some pages I'll use actually um, clear gesso so that I don't lose the color and the interest of the vintage ledger page. 
So if you have an interesting thing going on on your page, you could do that as well. I'm gonna go ahead and dry that. Okay, so before I start my painting, I'm actually going to talk to you a little bit about who's inspiring me right now with art journaling. And this is uh, Domique 14, and this is some of her work. And like many of you, I collect inspiration on Pinterest. And I love that she uses images of her daughter um, in these really beautiful paintings. And they're kind of whimsical and playful, yet, um, I don't know, they have a lovely meaning to them. They have a beautiful kind of poetic nature. And I think I'm going to use that as a little bit of an inspiration in using some of my own daughter's pictures that I took of her and kind of building upon um, these, these images here. So we'll see how that goes. I love how she uses a lot of white. So she typically works in a pretty limited color palette like we're going to be doing today. And I like that. You know, she chooses the colors that she wants to use and she allows them to be the focal point and then balances them with black and white in contrast. So this is going to be my inspiration for today and we'll see where it takes me. I usually use matte medium for my glue, and so I'm going to go ahead and put some of that out in a little dish. And I work pretty intuitively, so I'm going to try not to overthink my process here and just kind of let it happen. for me I'm not super fussy um, I don't often cut out you know really detailed pieces I'd rather use things kind of torn and a little bit more organic and that's totally up to you how you want to collage things on that's just how I typically work with collage Make sure you move the colors around the page so if you put you know a color in one area you want to definitely move it you know and see you know the eye wants to see it more than once typically so that helps create some color harmony I typically do things in odd numbers so I have three pieces of this you know napkin if I'm gonna do one more that would make it four so I'd want to do five and I may or may not move add any more right now. Mm. I might add a little bit here. And again, I may or may not keep all of this napkin showing. It just kind of 
depends on where I'm led next. That's kind of what I mean by working intuitively. It really helps you to stay open and, and kind of loose if you just don't think too far ahead. Stay present with what you're doing and see where it takes you. And that can be kind of exciting and more relaxing than trying to answer all the questions right away. So my next you know, instinct is to get my charcoal pencil and to do some drawing. I kind of want to outline the figure and maybe make some marks. Yeah.